Hello everyone and welcome to my Q&A video. Let's just get straight into it. So a lot of you have asked questions and I'll try and get to as many as I can. So the first question is from Truth Matterson who asks, what's going to happen after the alien arc is finished? Are you going to go back to modern vs modern and just leave the aliens alone? Or are the aliens going to be a permanent part of this, this universe? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I have a few Micro Wars videos left, including the aliens, and then after that I'm not sure yet. I don't actually have solid plans after Micro Wars, but I'm sure I'll think of something as I'm editing. Second question is from Kang Zan Jun, who asks, are there other nations that exist in the Black Star Initiative universe other than the Calithians and Zanzans? Yes, there are, but I don't own any yet. I would love to have some other factions in there something based on russians i'd like to have some australians in there canadians europeans uh, uk germany that kind of thing but unfortunately <laughs> the uh the modern warfare models are quite expensive so i can't afford to get too many at the moment but yes they do exist but they don't feature yet in micro wars Sundance 777 asks, how many of the Abrams do you have i see three or so in your videos but i don't know if you're using multiple um i have three I only have three of the Abrams. Um, however, I only have one striker. So the striker is the troop carrier that you can see in some shots. And that I only have uh, one of. So every time you see multiple strikers, so specifically if you watch Micro Wars 2, there's three strikers in that. It's because I edited the... I shot three different sets of footage and then edited them all together to look make it look like the three strikers. But in terms of the Abrams main battle tanks, I only have three. Logan Hayashi asks, where you find the effects? So the effects I have... So this is my Micro Wars 4 composition. And you can see I've organized all my effects. Um, so a lot of these I've purchased from different websites. So for example, the aerial explosions here, these are from a website called Video Copilot. The explosions such as these dust explosions, which you've seen quite a lot, um, I got them from a website called Action VFX. Now these are professional footage, they're professional effects for use in like even Hollywood films and things. There are free alternatives. In fact, Action VFX have a lot of free stuff you can use and I'd recommend using that to start with. You can also get things from Sound Crate, which have some free effects which you can use. But yeah, I get my effects from Video Copilot, Action VFX, and another one called Detonation Films, which is where I get the tanks shooting. So like this cannon, that is uh, from Detonation Films. Asha Croy asks, can we see your whole collection? And what got you into toy soldiers slash army men in the first place? You can't see my whole collection yet because I'm still got a few more models that I haven't revealed yet and also that I haven't bought yet. And instead of just making another collection video, I'm going to wait until they arrive before I do the collection video. What got me into Toy Soldiers Army Men in the first place is my dad. He is big into wargaming, uh, Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, um, but also a massive historian. Uh, fan so he's got lots of like Napoleonics World War Two. so I grew up around a lot of these miniatures and then as a kid I had access to you know your classic green and tan army men so I had a lot of them to play with and then played the video games army men back in the day they were really fun and then eventually when I found out about stop motion and then looked online you've got these really awesome videos that people have been making throughout the the years and I just wanted to make my own piece of it but I wanted to make it something different, which is why I chose to use modern figures instead of green versus tan, but I will use green and tan in the future, but that's why I made my videos. So yeah, my dad, my dad got me into it. So a static esports channel asks, where did you get your sounds for editing such as screams, grunts, tank rolling, etc.? So I got most of them from Battlefield 4. So there was a big sound pack and I got them from Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4 is also a huge inspiration for my videos. I really enjoyed that game, and a lot of inspiration for my Modern Warfare actually came from Battlefield 4, so I'll, there's, there's a few things that relate to Battlefield in my videos, and I might even lean into it more, because I, I just really love Battlefield. So 
yeah, m most of my sound effects are just straight from Battlefield 4, but don't tell EA that, they'll probably go upset. Next question is from Duncan Reed, who says, Me and my boys love the films. Thanks so much for putting the effort in. You're welcome. So I wanted to ask, do you research or get advice on military maneuvers or have any personal experience, or do you set it up straight off the top of your head? So the first question, yes, I... It's all straight off the top of my head. Um, I have asked a few things about dialogue in the past, but I haven't actually used it. So things like uh, when a tank says, sorry, when a tank commander says target tank or load Sabo, I learned terms like that from a few books. But no, all my maneuvers are straight off the top of my head. I've never actually used proper tank tactics. I just make it up. So I hope any veterans out there, any tankers, <laughs> I hope... It's not too bad. The second question that Duncan asks is, are the vehicles stop motion or for the simpler scenes, do you tug them along with super thin wire? Uh, it's all stop motion. Nothing moves on its own. Everything is just stop motion. So if I go here, this is the full footage. There's no, this isn't edited or anything. Um, this is just the tank moving. So they're all just photos. This scene goes for, what, three seconds? I shoot at 12 frames per second. So that's 36 photos just for that tank to move there. Crankybox99 asks, how do you guys paint the details of the figures so well? The answer to that is, I didn't paint them. My brother did, and he's actually a professional artist. You can check him out here. But he's always painted figures. He's got his own Warhammer 40k collection, um, and he's painted quite a few figures in the past, but I asked him if he could paint them as a favor, and he did, so thanks to him. The reason why he paints them so well is because he's good at it. Rax asks, how long does it typically take you to film and then edit? Also love the vids. Uh, I'm not really sure because I never really time it. I would say probably for every second you see on screen takes me about 30 to 45 seconds to make. So that includes setting up uh, the actual filming and then uploading it to my computer, organizing the footage. You can see here, I've organized all my footage into the different parts. And then editing all the effects. So, you know, some scenes have lots of effects, like some of these helicopter scenes. If I go, yeah, like this scene here, you can see there's actually a lot of layers at the bottom here. So this has 19 layers just for this shot. So this scene will take longer than another scene because I have, you know, to put all the the smoke and the shadows and the helicopters in. So yeah, I'd say on average 30 to 40 to 45 seconds per second of footage you see. So almost a minute per second. So it does take a long time, but I, sometimes I work really fast and sometimes I work really slow. So it's there's no real uh, accurate time, I could say. Discarded Studios asks, how do you create your stories and where do you find the effects? So if you actually go back and watch my videos, they don't actually have any story at all. They're the closest that used to have a story was probably Operation Warden. But even then it was just go to spot and then escape with the thing that you collected, which is never described. It, there's no actual story. So Micro Wars is the first series I've made. There's actually a story and I'm learning a lot more. So for example, Micro Wars 2, I learned, I did a briefing and then had a bit more of a build up to the battle. Micro Wars 3, I established that the aliens are the cause of the conflict that happened in Micro Wars 1 and 2. And then Micro Wars 4, I actually added a lot more character and a lot more dialogue. And these just come with being more confident. So I'm more confident to talk about, um, sorry, I'm more confident to do voice acting. I'm more confident in my ability to make a video interesting that has dialogue in it. So you'll see more story get introduced as I get better at making videos. But at the moment, I've always wanted to make an alien invasion film because alien invasions are awesome. You know, things like Independence Day, Battle Los Angeles, Edge of Tomorrow, they're just awesome. So I wanted to make one myself. So that's where I came up with the story for this. I wanted to build up to something in this case, it was an alien invasion, and then, yeah, so that's where I came up with this story, but this is the first story I've ever had, so... But you can expect more story in the future. As for the effects, they... I answered that in another question, um, but they come from actionvfx.com, Detonation Films, and Video Copilot. Joshua Reese asks, Are you planning to expand your collection anytime soon? Because I would like some unboxing videos of you reviewing some new army men in your videos. 
Uh, I am planning to expand my collection as I can afford it. Uh, as for unboxing videos, I'm not sure I would make those. I don't really like unboxing videos, but if my subscribers would like me to make one, just let me know and maybe I could make one. I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe I could do an unboxing video, but it's not on the it's not on the plan at the moment. Army Men Life asks, are you ever going to focus on classic Army Men again? Yes, I definitely will. So watch this space. Comrade 45 asks, what app did you use for this stop motion and how long to make this vid? So this video took five months total in terms of from starting it to finishing it. I would say maybe a hundred hours of work, maybe? I'm not sure. I don't, again, I don't really time it. As for what software I use, so the software I have open now on my screen, this is Adobe After Effects. This is the where I do all my effects adding. So for example, so for example, scenes like this, it's only four seconds long. So zero seconds here, four seconds here. This is where I do my effects. So I'll in the dust, I'll put the helicopters in, things like that. And then once I've finished my effects, I will import them all into Adobe Premiere Pro. And then that's where I edit all the clips together and put the sounds in. So they're the two programs I use, Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro. Jordan C asks, my question is, can I paint my figures with model paint? Yes, they're wargaming figures, so they're made for tabletop wargaming. So any paint that is compatible with modern wargaming figures, you'll be able to use on Empress Miniatures. They're designed to hold modeling paint perfectly. Joseph Stalin <laughs> asks, when are you going to add your T14 Amata on the Micro Wars series? Uh, I'm not. And the reason why I'm not going to is because the T14 Amata I have is 172 scale, which is much smaller than the 150 scale Type 99 and M1A1 Abrams I have. So it actually looks really silly compared to them in terms of size. So Empress Miniatures actually have a T14 in the proper scale. So maybe one day I can get a T14 in the right scale, but as of right now, I will not be adding that T14 to the Micro Wars series because it's just too small. Uh, it, it looks silly. Ruby Barty asks, when are you going to make the next Micro War? Uh, next year. So probably I'll start January, if not latest of February I'd say. There's a couple of videos I want to make before then, little short videos, and they will be to experiment with doing different types of effects and different styles of making video um, with the intention to use the skills I learn in the next Micro Wars. So I'm pretty keen to make the next Micro Wars because if you liked Micro Wars so far, then you are going to absolutely love Micro Wars 5. Vincent Ho asks, in a number of your last videos, you used an AC-130 and some F-35s, along with MiGs, T-72s, and T-14s. Are those CGI or actual models? Uh, the AC-130 is CGI, as is the F-35. In fact, I could probably put one here right now. If I go new, layer, solid, and then effect, video copilot, element, scene setup, Jet strike. And all my jets are here. Ground assault. Boom. And then if I press OK, there's a jet. So these are a video copilot package called Jet Strike, and it comes with a bunch of models that you can use in your videos really easily. I do plan on using them again, but at the moment I've set everything indoors, and you can't have jets indoors. So in future videos, I'll add them again. The T14 and T72s in my previous videos are actual models. They are not CGI, but I do not have them anymore. I have the T14, but it's too small to use, so you won't see it again in another video. Nice Like Ice Guy asks, where did you get the alien figures and vehicles? The alien figures are from Warlord Games. So they're the Al Gorin from the sci-fi war game Gates of Antares, and that's where I got the aliens from. And the vehicles are from Empress Miniatures. So if you go to empressminiatures.com, head to the ultra modern section and then vehicles, uh, I got my vehicles from there. James Manansala asked, why the Zanzids and Calytheans f are fighting in the first place? Because their politicians are idiots and couldn't find a peaceful solution to the problem. Chalga B asks, do you plan to make dog fights with planes only? It would be very epic. Um, yes.
Trolley Bears Vibe <laughs> asks, where do you get all the Modern Warfare figures and the others? Or can I just make a video with just regular army men? I get the figures from Empress Miniatures. If you want to make a video with regular army men, you should absolutely do it because regular army men are badass and anyone that makes videos with them is also a badass and I love those videos. So you should absolutely make a video with regular army men if you want to. Nathan's the one says, what made you want to start this series? The answer is... Alien invasions are awesome. Quang Min Nguyen asks, Will the alien invasion have part two? Yes, it will. It is definitely going to have a part two, and a part three, and a part four. And that's all I'll say on the matter. Trevor Riley asks, How do you repay your brother for painting the figures for you? Uh, I bought him a Lego set that he has wanted since he was a kid. And because of that, he offered to paint the figures for me. Jeff asks, hey Black Star Initiative, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing really well, thank you. <laughs> Camden Landis asks, I had a look on the Empress minifigures website and I'm wondering if they are painted or if it's DIY and will there be more Alien Wars in the future? Uh, the Empress Miniatures website, they DIY, so they come, they're metal and they come as metal. They're not painted, you have to paint them yourself. Uh, will there be more Alien Wars in the future? Yes, there will. Kang Zan Jun asked, Why did you name your channel Black Star Initiative? Well, <laughs> it's a good question because I forgot. It was 10 years ago, or 9 years ago, and I don't remember why I called it that. Maybe I'll change it or shorten it just down to Black Star in future, but at the moment I'm fine. But honestly, I can't remember why I called it that. Um, I was... I think 17 or 16 at the time. So yeah, it must have been something I thought was cool, but I can't remember what it was now. Fighter Animations 52 asks, how do you do the helicopters? The answer to that is green screen. So if we look at this composition here, which is the Black Hawk landing in front of the troops, this is basically a series of green screens. So the first green screen is the soldier at the front. If I, if I remove the green screen there, you can see that is the whole shot. It's just that little bit there. And then I use After Effects to remove the green screen. The second green screen is these soldiers here. So if I go to one of these soldiers and turn the key light on, remove that. So it's <laughs> you can see the green screen. It's literally just a piece of paper with a cardboard box. And I used the green screen so I didn't have to mask around them and the dust goes behind them instead of in front of them. So if I turn those effects back on, so that's that. So those three soldiers are all separate photos with a green screen. And then the helicopter itself was literally, this is what it looks like with nothing added. This was literally a helicopter that I put on a stand and then I put a green screen behind it and that's it. All I had to do then was edit out the green screen. So I put a mask around it. As you can see on this shot here, I put a mask around it and then I removed the green screen, which is really easy to do. And then I made it move around. And that's how I did the helicopters. All right. Well, that's all the questions I have time for for now. Thank you for listening. And thank you for asking so many questions. I hope you got some good answers. My next few videos are not going to be micro wars. They're going to be some experimental videos. I'm going to be experimenting with some techniques. And these techniques will, will allow me to make micro wars 5 bigger and better and more epic than anything I've made before. So those videos I will be releasing on my channel and Hopefully those will be released soon and I can get straight into Micro Wars 5. So thanks for watching and yeah, watch this space.